which from the scholars lead where, what they travel, what are their major books. So you can understand. When you read a hadith, it's a Behaoki. Anybody knows where Behaoki lives? You can find out. You can have better understanding about each of the scholars. Easy Quran, Jerusalem, he put together this presentation. Actual facts, some Quran and hadith. And teamwork. These are our contact number. We have a piece of paper you can write, uh, sign up, and you can send you information. Also, under construction, we have who is God, according to each holy books, time management, time compressor. You want to compress your time? You can do many things in one hour, which a normal person takes 10 hours. You can do much more than you are doing. Smart Muslim. Before the day of, before the final day, what will happen? Dream. How to extend your life forever? Who wants to live on this earth forever? Yeah. You can do that. And uh, parenting, young Muslim, these are some of them uh, which will be developed within the next eight to ten months. And then those things will be available. And these are our uh, books. As you can see, there are three Quran, one in English, Spanish, and French. And these are other books. These are the Tao books. Where do you stand? What every woman should know? Four out of five converts in America are women. Eighty percent. They find the beauty of Islam. It's a very educational book also for, for our sisters. You can find out how beautiful Islam is. You will not know the value unless you compare with other religion. Then you will open your mind and see, my goodness, so many things are Islam, guaranteed for us. And so on. And we have the same book in Spanish, Gospel of Barnabas, and so on. And these are the DVDs we have, we have nine of them. You can get copies, we have certain cost. We use it for Dawah purposes. We recycle the same money. So that we print more, distribute more. And cut down the cost. That is the process. The more we print, the cost will be less. That is one of the reasons we have a mission to print 100,000 copies of Quran. Our cost will be within one to two dollars. And it is good quality printing, so you can distribute more freely to other places. Dawa without excuse. Quran is a book of science, not science. There are over 6,000 verses in the Quran, more than 1,000 dealing with science. In any subject, there is reference in the Quran. Because it is the final revelation. It has a lot of scientific terminology. This is Albert Einstein. He said, science without religion is lame. Many things science cannot explain. Religion without science is blind. Dr. Maurice Bukhail, he is a French medical doctor. He lived in Saudi Arabia also for some time. He wrote this book, The Bible, The Quran and the Science. He compared all the scientific facts of the Bible and the Quran. And he could not find a single error in the Quran. He tried to find it. He could not find This is Professor Keith Moore. He is at the University of Toronto. He is still alive. His research area is conception and stages of embryological growth. How a child grows in the womb of their mother. How their cells multiply, the fingers, ears, eyes, those parts of the body gradually form. How this thing happens? That is his research area. And he said, I found everything from Quran. How about that? We cannot find anything. This guy found everything. And he wrote this book, Developing Human. This book has been translated into eight languages. And it is one of the textbooks. If someone is a medical college student, this is one of the textbooks. In that book, he has concluded that whatever I found in the Quran, which was revealed 1400 years back, in the middle of a desert, to a person who could not read, who could not write, would not have come from any other source except the Quran. It's not possible. Someone can't even write those scientific terminology 1400 years back in the middle of a desert. It has to be from the Creator. He knows everything. And also, he has concluded in that book that whatever I collect, whatever I found in the Quran, which was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has to be a truthful messenger because everything is correct. This is Professor Tedasan, he is at Chiang University, Thailand. His, his research area is his uh, pain concept, uh, receptors. As you know, our skin, it has receptors. That's how we got pain. If you remove your skin from your body, you will not feel any pain. That is one of the description Allah mentioned in Surah Nisa, as you can see, best of punishment. The how the people of the hellfire will be punished again and again. Their skin will be removed and replaced with another layer of skin. 
so that their punishment can continue. That description fits was so much impressed by, by the scientific accuracy that this professor was so impressed that how accurately Quran has described that pain receptor's description in the skin that he became Muslim. How about that? One ayat can change the life of a scientist forever. So this is about the planets, the stars, and so on. Vastness of space, Allah SWT talks about who has created the heavens and the earth and all that is in between. We have constructed the heaven, barely we have been able to extend the vastness of the space there. At Darya. He talks about the sun, he talks about the moon and so on. This is the popular picture, as you can see, when the astronauts first landed on the moon in 1969. They were standing on the moon looking at the earth. The distance is quarter million miles. That's how the earth looks like from the moon. If you travel far away from the earth, like this, if you travel four billion miles away from the earth, where is the earth? You cannot find it anymore. It is so vast. If you look at the center of the circle, that dot, I make a bigger dot so you can see ourselves. That is the earth. You can see in the vast space of Allah, our existence is so small. So tiny. Allah SWT talks about day and night. He makes day to night, night into day. He merges night into days, merges the day into night. Something merging. We don't have sudden sunrise or sudden, sudden sunset. It slowly merges. That's what Allah SWT is talking about. This is our sun, this is the earth. The distance is 93 million miles. The earth diameter is 8,000 miles diameter. Mars, the sun's diameter is so big, we collect one million two hundred sixty thousand hearts they will fit in the sun. And the earth is spins on its own axis like this, 24 hours a day and night. What is that the speed? The spinning speed? 1000 miles per hour. Everything in this space has two motions. One is on its own axis, another is it is going around with certain orbit. That's Allah's mother mentions also in the Quran. Like this also it goes around the earth sun, 365 days a year, and what is that speed? 67,000 miles an hour. Very high speed. We are sitting in this place which is moving at 67,000 miles an hour. How about that? We work for shuttle, I showed you earlier, before Salat to our kids, the shuttle goes around 17,000 miles an hour. And this is 67. So when you drive your expensive car in the freeway, 100 miles an hour, when you are getting a speeding ticket, right, you think you are doing cool? Allah is moving the whole earth at 67,000 miles an hour. And if that is stopping for gas, no matter how expensive car you have, you have to fill up, right? You cannot drive forever. Allah is moving the whole earth at 67,000 miles an hour. He's not stopping for gas. He's not asking you to pay his bills. If you would be asking, we'll all be broke by now. We're already broke anyway. These days. So this is the shuttle picture. As you can see, astronauts goes about 250 to 300 feet above the earth. That's how they can see, because they go around the earth every 90 minutes. So the 45 minutes they go through, go through the night, and 45 minutes they go through the day. And this is the picture, as you can see, the Allah SWT says marching, that means we are still, California is still day, and this is already dark, and night, and so on. This is another shadow, as you can see. This England is still day, France is already evening, and Africa is already dark. So this is our solar system. The whole thing is together around the sun. One of them is also our earth. Whole thing is also going around the Milky Way like this. How is that speed? 540,000 miles an hour. Roughly 150 miles per second. We cannot conceive that speed by any means. We have a supersonic fighter jet, right? Supersonic, hypersonic. But those things are so small. We can imagine this speed. 540,000 miles an hour. And how long it takes to go around our Milky Way? It takes 200 million years. Just to make one turn for our solar system, Allah is showing that the, the, the life, life cycle can be so long. As compared to our Earth, 50 years, 60 years, we are gone. After 200 million years, why you will be? 
I'm not showing you that the space can be so big, life cycle can be so long, for the other things also. This is the moon surface. It has a rocky uh, belt around the moon, fog line, like this, all around the moon. A lot of people ask this question, is it the same fog where Professor Lalarasman pointed his finger and it became split into two pieces? Unfortunately, we do not have enough information, so we cannot make that conclusion. But we have this information. Allah says in the Quran that he did split the moon. Surah al kamar And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he pointed his finger to the moon, it became two pieces like that. One piece came to the top of this mountain, another piece came down to the top of this mountain, on the horizon, very far. And people around the world saw this thing. Because there's only one moon, right? In those days there was no communication. But people in other cities outside Makkah, like Modina, Taif, Tabu, they actually saw these things. And when they travel to Makkah later, they give witness. Yes, we saw this thing. This is not only mentioned in the Quran, but also a historical fact. Eventually, both pieces went back after some certain time. And that is the moon we have today. Allah SWT talks about defined orbit. Everything in this space is defined. They cannot go at random. They cannot overtake each other. Sun cannot overtake the moon, nor does the night overtake, over, overstrip the day. They float each in an orbit, like this. Everything has that defined orbit. This is the Earth, this is Venus, this is Mercury, this is Mars, NASA has a mission to Mars within the next 15 years. This is Jupiter, this is Saturn, it has a lot of rings. These two are very cold. As you can see, everything is going on their own orbit. And one of them is a miracle, is Venus. As you know, before the Day of Judgment, the Sun will rise from the West, West. West. Is it not? And now the sun is rising from the east. east. The Venus is going in the opposite direction. Its sunrise is already in the west. It is, it is there all along. So do not think how Allah will make it happen. He Allah is doing it already in some other planets. Nothing is impossible for him to do. So the Venus, the sunrise is from the east, no, west, west. and sunset is to the east and so on. So the light travels from the sun, like this. How long it takes for this sun's light to cross our solar system? It's about three hours. That is the size of our solar system. This is the sun, it is massively burning gas, massively. And scientists recently found out the sun is not only burning, it is also producing gas at the same time. As compared to the earth, we have limited supply of gas. We are using too much gas. That's why gas price is so high. And uh, there is estimate that within the next 200 years, there will be no gas on the earth, unless we discover new places. And we have to drive our car with something else. But sun has a long life to go before it will run out. And this is the flame of the sun. The flame is so deep that we bring the earth, the earth will be inside the flame of the sun. Not only one earth, if you collect 45 earths, stack them vertically like this, like tennis balls, all the 45 arcs will be inside the flame of the sun. The depth of the flame is 365,000 miles. Arc is only 8,000 miles. Arc is getting smaller. So we have to define a very long distance. How long is 1 billion light years? If you go around the arc, maximum distance you can travel is 25,000 miles on the arc. If the light goes around the arc, it will travel 8 times in 1 second. Just like that. Light already travels 8 times around the arc in one second. That is the speed of light. It travels in one second, 186,000 miles. This is the distance for a minute, for an hour, for a day, month, and year. If the light keeps on traveling with that high speed, continuously for a year, that is called one light year, and so many miles it will travel. As you can see, it is difficult to count those miles, right? How about this one? This is called million light years, and this is billion light years. Everything in this space is measured how many million light years away from the Earth, how many billions of light years away from the Earth. So you can see our Earth is so small, so tiny, as compared to the vast space of Allah SWT. These are called asteroids, they are little, little pieces of stones floating in the vast space. So this is the actual picture, NASA has sent a very powerful camera to study them, to see how they move. So recently they found out that it has a gas coming out from all directions, that means it can move in any direction. And the danger is there is a, 
an asteroid belt above the Earth, about between 300 miles and above. Most of the time, asteroids, they stay there. It will make trouble. But once in a while, if there is someone is loose, it comes close to the Earth, it is pulled by the gravity, and when it comes to the atmosphere, the whole asteroid is burned completely by the atmosphere. Nothing comes on the Earth. That is one of the theory that dinosaurs were killed by the asteroids. They came, big piece came and hit the asteroids and they are completely destroyed. That's one of the, if you want to see, if you go to Arizona, New Mexico, there are big, big holes, 50 miles, 60 miles in diameter. Those are the impacts of the asteroids. And it happens once in a while, like this one, 2008, this October, one of them survived and came and hit Sudan. That, that is the piece left. But if a big piece survives like this, it can impact so heavily that every living creation on the earth will be destroyed. Everything. Whole water of the Pacific Ocean or, or Atlantic Ocean will spill over. We cannot imagine the destruction. Everything will be gone. Allah is saving us from those destructions. Why you are trying to go to Mars? First of all, it is close to the earth. It has uh, water and air there. We need water to survive. 80% of our body is composed of water. And air, yeah, we need to breathe. So those things are there. So there is a mission to Mars also within the next 15 to 20 years. And these are some of the data. As you can see, Earth is 8,000 miles, Mars is only 4,000 miles in diameter. It's much smaller in size. The distance is about 50 million miles from the Earth. The gravity is one third. If you weigh 100 pounds on the Earth, you want to lose weight, you can go to Mars. You weigh 38 pounds. And Mars has two moons, Earth has one moon. Maybe our moon sighting problem will be solved over there. <laughs> and so on. It has twisters like we have on the Earth, like this. So NASA has sent two robots to study them before they send human beings. And these are the robots, the two of them. One is called Spirit, the other is called Opportunity. They are roaming around and find out all the information so that we can find the right place to land. One thing it already found out that Mars doesn't have rivers and oceans like we have on the Earth. But it found many places are wet. That means if you dig few feet, you'll find water. Water is underground. And these are some of the examples. Water is flowing slowly from higher level to the lower level. So within two years, those missions are complete. So scientists have discovered that the North Pole of Mars is full of ice, completely covered with ice. So scientists believe that if anything ever lived on Mars, anything, it doesn't have to be human. It has to be under that area, North Pole. So they said that Phoenix lander, it has no wheels, it landed over there. It has three legs and a robotic arm. The goal is to dig around this area to find out anything, whether it is hair or bones or anything, so, it, so we can understand who lived over there. That is the mission. To travel long distance, as you can see. It has a robotic arm, it can scratch the surface, collect, collect samples and there is a laboratory which can analyze what are those things. So we have to wait until it finds anything. Because scientists believe that whatever the condition we have on the Mars today, the Earth will gradually transform into that condition. We will run out of water. The whole Earth will be out of water. The time will come, water will be on the underground. It is already happening in many places. Also, scientists believe that whatever the condition of the Earth we have today, Mars probably had those kind of conditions. Probably it has rivers and oceans, uh, trees, plants, animals, or any other thing. Any living things probably used to live over there. That is one of the reasons they want to understand as much as possible on the Mars. And that's why NASA is spending so much money and time to make that mission complete. And this is the wonderland. Whatever it, is, it discovers, it will be found over there. Similarly, this is Saturn. As you can see, Allah SWT has created this planet. It has a lot of rings. A lot of rings. So NASA has sent this probe. It, tra it travels seven years to reach that planet. 200 million miles. The goal is to have this probe going between the rings and show us how Allah created those rings. It's a human curiosity. Why this planet has so many rings suddenly? And these are the rings. As you can see, each of them is an individual ring. They have different color, different thickness, different composition, different temperature. They are so nicely organized. 
spinning with the planet forever. And if you go in between the rings, there are little, little moons also in between. Allah SWT has decorated those rings with moons. And the last ring is made of ice. This is called F-ring. These are the modern miracles of Allah SWT. So Saturn had big, big storms. Like this is the Earth diameter, 8,000 miles diameter. Three years back, we had I came to Houston. Actually, it destroyed my house also. <laughs> See, the, it was category uh, four. Highest category is five, 175. This was 150. It lasted three days. The size was 250 miles in diameter. Most of the storms on the Earth is formed in the, in the sea. Then it comes to the shore and it dies down. So it has a certain size, certain velocity, and it lasts few days only. There is no such storm on the Earth, which lasts forever. Allah SWT has created a storm and Saturn. This is the travel path of a typical storm on the Earth. This is the storm. This size is 5,000 miles diameter. Can you imagine a storm as big as the size of the Earth? That is the storm. It is already there in the Saturn. And what, is, what it is doing? It is fixed. It is never moving in its center. Like when we, have a, we live in Texas, so any storm is formed in the Gulf to track the eye, where it is going. Is it going to Florida, or going to Texas, or going to Mexico? So it has nothing to track. The eye is in the same place. And the average velocity is 350 miles per hour. It's very high speed. It's above any scale we have. We don't have that scale. If 300 miles, 50 miles comes to any part of the world, that place will be completely flat. In any place. You will not find any building left. Those kind of velocity. So you can see Allah is showing you that the, the storm can be so powerful, so big, continuous, forever. The concept of the storm is changing as compared to what we have on the earth. This is the storm. It is in the south pole of Saturn. Similarly, Saturn has one of the um, uh, moon is called Titan. It looks very familiar. The reason being it looks like it has trees on the ground. It has a lightning happening, it has a clouds, very similar to the Earth. Maybe something is walking over here, we do not know right now. So that's why NASA is looking very closely, if, because it has all the chemistry required for anything to live over there. So those are the future discoveries. And similarly, as you know that black hole is formed when two or three pieces are combined in the same direction. Like these two are colliding with each other in the opposite direction, they destroy each other, torn into pieces. But if two pieces are close to each other, like you can see there are stars and planets everywhere, but if two or three pieces are close to each other, like look at here, there are two pieces over there, they are close to each other, and if they move in the same direction, eventually they combine, and that's how the black hole is formed. So they are moving in the same direction. So they combine, and scientists only know that when they combine, there is a tremendous amount of force generated at the center, very powerful force. And that force, there is, those are the description in the Quran. So our scholars, Islamic scholars, looking into some of the verses, where there is a reference about black hole, different, because they think that they're, 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 the concept they have from their Quranic verses, literal translation is not correct. It's trying to accommodate those new discoveries. So this is the black hole, and any star come, anything comes close to the black hole, it is pulled by the force, and it is torn into pieces, eventually they become dust particles. This is the star broken down into pieces. As it goes to the center, it becomes smaller pieces, eventually they become dust particles. So can you imagine such a powerful force which can destroy a star completely, dust? Luckily we are very far away from the black hole, others will be a long gone. So NASA has this Hubble telescope, from the Earth you cannot see many things because the air is full of moisture and cloud. So this Hubble telescope is above the Earth, about 300 miles above the Earth. So you can see much clearer picture which you can see on the Earth with a regular telescope. So these are the pictures of the Hubble telescope. One side lighted, one side is dark, and this is lighted at the center. And there are new new discoveries. This is Scientists used to think that sun is the brightest. Now they found something brighter than the sun. This is much brighter than the sun. You can only see through the Hubble telescope. In the same way, there are in the space there are big, big holes. They call it moving gates. So those 
falls, Allah is dropping stars and planets. You want to see Allah's action in what? You can see those through the telescope. New stars are coming into this space and they're floating away in the vast space of Allah's own. And this is our Milky Way, as I showed you earlier, as you can see, this picture is taken by the Hubble telescope. You can only see from a distance. It has spirals. In one of the spirals, as you can see, there are millions and billions of dots. One of the dots is our solar system. That's where we belong. The size of this Milky Way is 100,000 light years in diameter. It's one of the smallest ones. But we are part of it. It belongs to us. You can only see from a distance. Now you can imagine, it takes 200 million years to make one turn of this. The bigger the piece, slower the speed. Mass is very heavy. And so on. Similarly, if you cannot conceive Milky Way, if you collect billions and billions of Milky Ways, it becomes supernova. Inside there are millions and millions of Milky Ways. And uh, countless number of solar or planets and so many things are there. You can only see from this distance using the Hubble telescope. And so on. So, Allah's universe, this is the pictures from the Hubble telescope. Each of them is different size, as you can see. Shapes are different, size are different. Allah is so creative. He can make every single piece is different. Like every human being look different. Your fingerprints different, your DNA different, your face different, your color different. You are unique in this world. There will be no such person like you till camera. Similarly, Allah also created the vast universe like this. So how far is far enough? How far you can think of with the human mind? This is the earth. This is the, our solar system less than three light hours. I showed you earlier. This is one light year. This is 10,000 light years. You can see from the earth with the regular telescope. Beyond that, you cannot see anything. That is one of the reasons we have this Hubble telescope. It can show up to 100 million light years. You can see much clearer picture, very far, only by the Hubble telescope. But it has a limit also. It can only see 100 million. It cannot see beyond that. How about 1 billion light years away from the Earth? You cannot see anything. There are so many things are there. Our technology stops here. Our knowledge stops here. We do not know what Allah created there. And beyond that also. Because we do not know where is the end of the boundary. How big is the first sky? Nobody has any idea. Nobody knows how big is the world. We are inside, but we do not know how big is the space. But we have this information in the Quran. Allah says about Surah Nuh that He has created seven heavens, one above the other. So we have seven heavens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are in the first one. So if you cannot find the size of the first one, how in the world are you able to find the second one? See, our knowledge is so small. We are in a small place. We have no idea how big is the vast universe of Allah. And on one night, Andrew Jibrail came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in Makkah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, you have to travel with me. Allah invited you. And both of them went to Jerusalem. They prayed with, at Mojib al-Aqsa with all, all the other prophets. And they ascended the heaven like this. And when they arrived here, this is the boundary of the seventh heaven. It has a name in the Quran. Andrew Jibrail said, Ya Rasulullah, this is my limit. I cannot cross. You have to go yourself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam traveled alone. Allah showed him everything. What will, what will happen in the unseen world? What will, what will happen in the grave? What will happen in the day of judgment? What is the reward of a good deed in the heaven? What is the punishment of a bad deed in the hellfire? Those things were shown to him. And he was sent back to the earth and he was able to describe those facts. Those things will happen. Whether it is a small good deed or a, or a big good deed, small sin or a big sin, you are accountable for your actions. So those things are coming. They are being recorded by the angels. So we should think about ourselves. That well, I am a, Allah is so big, so vast, the space is so big. We do not know how big it is. But the point is, what is my immediate headache? If you have a headache, what you do? You look for Tylenol, right? You don't care what is happening around you. Your immediate goal is to find the Tylenol. Same thing. Then what can I do to, be, to become, to benefit most from Allah? I am a human being. I will die very soon. I'll face the consequences, whether great in the hellfire or what they have. So what can I do to benefit most from Allah? That should be my immediate goal. How Allah created everything? He created everything by saying this word. Everything was empty. There was no supernova, there was no Milky Way, there was no black hole or nothing. Allah said, be, kun fire, 
everything came into existence. Should not we think about him? That how much power he had, authority and power he had, that he can create those things from nothing. He is the creator. That's what Allah says, I created everything in six days. And that is one of the reasons Allah says again and again, when you see the vast universe, you should think about it. Sometimes you wonder about black hole, you wonder about uh, so many things we see in this space. But you fail to recognize the creator of those things. He has 99 names, he can see everything, he can hear everything. He controls our life and death. He knows exactly who we will be living this world. We are not here, just free, do whatever you want. There is a time limit. A time will come, you will be, you'll be gone. Nobody can keep you here. Your time will be up. And we cannot go outside his boundary, we don't even know his boundary. How far it is. We cannot hide from him. He knows exactly where you are. And you are at the mercy of the moment. If you look at yourself, your heart is working, your kidney is working, every part of your body is functioning so beautifully. Is it not? Go to the hospital and see how people are suffering with little, little things. So you are drowned in the mercy of Allah. So He's doing all these things for me. So He's doing. He's doing all these things to you. So I'm asking you to take a new challenge for the rest of your life. You should open your mind and say, well, I was uh, trying to fool him. I was disobedient to him. I am not going to do it anymore. He is very powerful. I cannot avoid him. I will face him sooner or later. I take the challenge for the rest of my life. What can you do? What Allah wants you to do? He wants you to obey him at every step. That is the only thing he wants. He reminded you again and again. And follow his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said everything correct. And there is a shaitan working. They are nice. Allah says in the Quran, he is your open enemy. He's not going to give up. He's working 24-7. Day and night. He's working when you are sleeping. So he's trying to destroy us. So we should stay away from him. And as a Muslim, we believe that our time in this world is mukaddar. That means everything is fixed. How long you will live, how much you will earn, everything is fixed. When your food will be finished, breathing time will be finished, you have to live. But life hereafter, everything is open. How big a rewards you want from Allah? How big a paradise you want from Allah? How big a success you want from Allah? Everything is open. There is no restriction over there. So we are, if you are a smart Muslim, what you should do? You should thank Allah that whatever Allah you gave me, I have more than enough. I have more than enough life you gave me. Many of your friends are already gone. You are on borrowed time. You are, out, you are about to leave. You are already late. Allah is slow down. Allah says, okay, hold on. Give me a few more minutes, a few more minutes to this person. You have enough money, more than you need. Everything, access. You have 24 hours, you don't need 24 hours. Everything is there. So our focus should be that, okay, whatever Allah gave me, I am happy, I am thankful. Focus for the life here. So you can get the highest reward and be most successful over there. That should be the focus. That yes, whatever Allah gave me, I am not going to you know, struggle anymore. I'll be focusing more for the life hereafter forever. Inshallah, we'll do that. Inshallah. That is the smart thing to do. Otherwise, we'll be running like non-Muslims. Their their destination is till the death. They do not know what will happen after the death. Our life starts after the death. So focus on the life hereafter. And who wants that highest success over there? Who wants that highest success? If you see complete Quran and Hadith, we have a job for you. Highest success will be given to those people who will dedicate their life for spreading Islam. Highest paid job. If you see the complete Quran and Hadith, highest reward will be given to those people who dedicate their time, maximize. So efforts should be maximize your efforts for spreading Islam. Especially, <coughs> especially living in this country. As I was saying earlier last night in Jama Masjid, that we are living in the country of opportunity. Many things you can do in this country, you can do in Muslim countries. Is it not true? This presentation I could not present in a Muslim country. I was told that I needed permission from the king. <coughs> so, we are living here, we have a good life, good job, good provision, good car, good house, alhamdulillah. But, look at the brighter prospect that you are living in a country of opportunity. Whole world is looking to this country from technology to anything, anything you name. This is the leader. So, 
Allah has placed you in such an important position. So your focus should be that I should do everything possible to spread Islam. <coughs> Shall we do that? Sure. That is the best thing to do. Do not take your privilege and waste it. Allah gave you a bright future. I tell my son all the time that you don't realize the value of the green card because you are by birth citizen. Ask the person who is struggling with the student visa. How, how valuable is the green card? <coughs> so my dear respected brothers, to make my point, organize yourself, focus on Dawah. How can you spread Islam? There are so many misinformation going on around yourself. You will find in the media and so many ways they are distorting facts, distorting things. So ask yourself, what can I do to make a difference in this world? That should be the focus. Leave your legacy. Legacy means you leave something for future generations to benefit from it. That should be the way to go. Inshallah, we'll do that. Sure. For more information, we have this presentation in the form of a DVD. You can get a copy. You can benefit from it as much as you want. You can show it to a Muslim, non-Muslim, your children, your school, uh, everybody. They should know the Creator. Who is the Creator? Who created the vast universe? And you can share. This is the best Dawa tool also. And you can contact us. You have some copies available. You can benefit from it. We have certain cost to use it for Dawa purposes. All the dollar goes to print and distribution. And this is the task you have. If you are serious about Dawa, these are the tools you have. Tool means the world is very sophisticated. You have to have a right tool. Like if you have a if you have a nut, say 10 millimeter, you need the socket 10 millimeter. If you have 11 millimeter, will it open? Or 9 millimeter, it will not open, right? So you have to have the right tools. That is the that, that's what I call tools. First of all, you can get the that presentation, comparative religion presentation I have, which is free. You can sign up, write your email address, I'll send it to you. English, Spanish, I have many converts in Spanish. I continuously send to around the world. Anybody send me junk mail, I send them my presentation. How about that? <laughs> That's the best thing to do. Somebody send me junk mail continuously. I just send them. Muslim, non Muslim, it doesn't matter why one is sending. Right? People are, don't you receive junk mail continuously? So make best use of it. It is gold mine. I'm telling you. Just respond to this file. I have only, it's only a small file, less than uh, 30 slides. And you see, there are so many responses will come. So many people will be interested to know about it. Islam. This is one of the options, I'm telling you. Uh, similarly, I have those two books, Where Do You Stand? What Every Human Should Know. Those are the two books based on that presentation. If somebody asks, send them those two books. I always carry those books, whether I'm in the plane or train or anywhere. If I'm in the plane, they make sure the person sitting next to me, I talk with him and give him the book. Lend him the book. Lend. <laughs> so, always lend. Do not give anybody anything free. If you lend, he will return to you. He will read it. Then the goal is to make him read. If you give him free, he will put it in the shelf. <laughs> Including Quran. This is a fact. Only people read Quran who are in the jail, who are in the hospital. They actually complete. So my target is to send Quran in every jail. Because every jail has a library. And so we give, lend the books to that person for one to two weeks. Whether it is friends, colleagues, neighbors, anywhere. Whenever I need. I have, I, I mail my books for through the post office. So one lady in the post office, she saw. And she said, uh, what you mail every week? If I, I, mean, I said, I'm author. Really? When you say author, you get a lot of attention. So I gave her that book. What everyone should know. After two weeks, she, has, she says, makes sense. She became Muslim. So it has, this book has a powerful testimony about the Muslim sisters around the world. What is their religion before? Why they became Muslim? Testimonials around the world. And then I have the Department of Justice data. How the women are being abused and battered in this society. How they are being cheated from politicians to anybody. This is not continuously seen in the media. So those data are there. And what Islam offers them in, in Christianity, in Judaism, in Hinduism, and in Islam. So it can it will be a very powerful book even for our Muslim sister. You will never know the value of Islam. What rights Allah gave it to you, unless you compare with other religion. How do you know it is a Chevrolet or Mercedes Benz? Big price difference, is it not? Both has four cars, four wheels, is it not? But one is twenty thousand, another is hundred thousand. So that's why you need to compare. Then you can realize the value. So many things you take it for granted. You can compare and then realize the value. 
So you keep landing. Continuously you keep landing. Like you want to catch fish, put your bait in the water. Something will catch something. If you don't have bait, nothing will catch. So those landing means it will be pull something. And then follow up. Avoid controversies, argument, non negative discussion. Show your best behavior. This is very important. Professional no? best examples. And remember, you have some information, every human being on the earth is looking for that information. Only you have. You can hold it, then go to sleep, or you can share it. It makes a difference in this world. If you have a pain, like Professor Lalasan had pain, his example is that every human being is going to help his saving one at a time, one at a time. Ramatulli Lalami. We are his followers. If we do not do anything, who is going to do it? Ask yourself. We are so proud of his, him, uh, that he is our prophet, so merciful prophet. He did so much sacrifice, and he expected you to make efforts for him. He says, convey from me, even if it's a single verse, even if in one verse. So nobody's excused. Do not say that I do not Arabic, I do not know Quran, how can I give the one? Prophet says, even if you know one verse, you convey. You cannot sit back. You are not excused. Under every situation, whether brother, sister, everybody, are responsible to propagate Islam. So inshallah, please take initiative. And that's how we can benefit from it. Inshallah, we do that. Does that look bad? We have, uh -huh. okay. We have also Quran. I could not show it to you because of the time limit. I also have to go to the airport. Only thing is, we have a Quran. Pentagon uses this Quran. You can look at it. If you want to support this project, you can also do the best thing. In this country, 60 percent of the people who become Muslim is by reading Quran. Does that look bad? Yes. Any questions? Okay. I just like uh, only someone has a question. I have just like a comment, like uh, all of us saw that the, the flame of the sun, like is it like uh, it takes like 35 feet in one diameter? Imagine like one flame of the sun can carry like 30 